Hey you guys, so today I'm going to show you how I painted this picture of a German Shepherd and he's kind of a dark German Shepherd. So I'll be talking a little bit about that, but mostly I wanna highlight this new brush that I discovered. This is it, the watercolor scrubber brush. When I bought it, I thought it was an oil painting brush and that's what I called it in some videos that I made that I'm not gonna publish because I was wrong. It's not, because when I went to research what it was, much to my delight. It was a watercolor scrubber brush. I didn't know they existed. And yet, here it is in its beautiful reality. So um, this is mostly one of what I wanna focus on. And I was so excited about this brush that I ordered more. So I'll probably do more videos about scrubber brushes. Aren't they awesome? But um, right now it's just gonna be about this scrubber brush because it's the only one I have, but I'll have another one soon. Um, but anyway, this is a size eight, um, it's hard to see, a uh, Royal and Lang Nickel size eight stiff scrubber. And I will link to these scrubber brushes, but the one that I have right now in this video is gonna be um, highlighting the size eight one. Okay, and so I've always used oil painting brushes in the past to do a lot of the end work in a painting. And uh, this is a, a good example of a painting that I did. This is actually print. But you can see, like in these highlighted areas, that's all scrubber brush. I scrub out the highlights. So I will talk to you guys about how I do that. And I'm going to give you five tips on how to effectively use a scrubber brush. So without further ado, let's get into those five tips. Tip number one. Tip number one is use the right paper. Uh, if you use cheap watercolor paper, when you go to scrub, it's just gonna tear apart and you're not gonna be happy with the results. So I use Arches Cold Press 140 pound paper. And you can also, of course, use 300 pound paper. And there are other professional papers that will probably work just as great, but that's what I choose to use. But just make sure that you use a professional quality watercolor paper when you're using these scrubber brushes. Okay, tip number two is to use the right paint. Now, if you use a scrubber brush and uh, you try to scrub out a paint that is a staining paint, then you are not gonna get very far. Um, an example of a staining paint would be alizarin crimson. No matter how much you scrub out alizarin crimson, you're always gonna have a pink stained paper underneath where you put that paint. That's another reason, yet another reason why I love my combination that I use so often of burnt, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, uh, because those are both not very staining and they scrub out beautifully. And also they have beautiful granulating effects. So they're just great paints. And together they make a very nice black. And I've done a lot of talking in my other videos of how I use that combination. But specifically, when you're doing a painting and you know you're gonna be scrubbing out, uh, use colors such as those that will scrub almost to back to the white of the paper. Okay, so tip number three, when you're using your scrubber brush is to uh, use it mostly towards the end of the painting. And you wanna use it towards the end of the painting because you don't want to scrub the paper and then the paper will be a little damaged and it won't be as easy to paint um, onto that paper. So I always wait till I'm almost done with the painting and then I bust out my scrubber brush so that um, I won't be needing to rework the area after I've scrubbed it. So in general, try to wait till the end of the painting before you use your scrubber. My next tip is to get the whole shape area you want to scrub wet. What I mean is, say you're painting my face and you want to scrub out this highlight on the top of my nose. So do you get just my nose area wet? No, because what will happen when my nose area dries, you'll have these little edges where you can see the paint color um, make it'll make a hard little edge so what you want to do is if you want to scrub out this area get this whole area wet with clear water 
and then go in and scrub drip, 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 like that. <laughs> You'll be a lot happier with the result. So tip number five is to blot. And you can use a lot of different tools to blot. You can use paper towel. You can use an absorbent watercolor brush. It just depends on the effect you're going for and how much you want to blot up. You might not want to blot up any at all. Sometimes you don't, but sometimes you just need to blot up a little. So you can use another watercolor painting brush to go in and blot up, or you can use paper towel or tissue. There are a lot of different things that you can use to blot. So I just want to go over a few other little details of how I painted this dog specifically. Um, I used mostly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for the entire dog, including the background. And he's a dark dog, so I made the background really light. So I got the whole um, background wet with clear water, and then I blotted in some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which I mixed together to just have a very light gray model background just to support this dark dog. So I kept it light so that the dark dog really popped out, but I didn't want it completely white because then that would be too glaring. So that's how I did the background. Um, and you will see towards the end of the painting, I use a lot of liner brush. I use my liner brush to put in the little dark whiskers because this dog had dark whiskers, so I didn't use masking to make the um, whiskers. I used a dark liner brush to put in the little dark details. I used the liner brush to put in little dark fur details in his coat. And then, so I would make a line, say this is a line of paint that I use with my liner. And then I would come in with a liner brush with clear water and paint a little bit over that line to soften parts of the line that was supposed to be a fur detail, just to soften it. So that's another effect that I used in this painting. And I did a whole video on this dog's tongue, by the way. So I will link that up here, I think, or at the end of this painting, I will put a link to how I painted this dog's tongue. And then um, I also used a liner brush to sign this painting. So the liner brush was really useful in this painting and also my new best friend, the watercolor scrubber brush. Those are the main things that I wanted to tell you guys about in this painting. Be sure to subscribe and click that little bell icon and um, I upload videos about once to twice a week so you don't want to miss out on any of the good juicy watercolor stuff coming up. So um, anyway, I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. If you are interested in learning from me more closely, you can subscribe to my Patreon where um, I will give you uh, more one-on-one -on -one critiques of your work and also I upload some videos that are just for my Patreon subscribers. That is about it and I hope you guys have a great 2020 and I'll see you in a couple days with a new video. <laughs> Bye you guys.